This series of reactions looks at the dependence of concentration on the iodine clock reaction. The concentrations of the two stock solutions can be found in the description. In the first trial, 50 milliliters of the potassium iodate solution is combined with 5 milliliters of the sodium bisulfite solution. You can record the reaction time based on when the two reactants were mixed and record how long it takes for the reaction product to appear. The presence of the blue iodine color indicates the reaction is complete. A second trial of the same reaction is performed, combining 50 milliliters of potassium iodate and 5 milliliters of sodium bisulfite. By timing the reaction and taking the average of the two trials, you can determine the average reaction time for this reaction based on the concentrations provided. The blue color again represents the formation of iodine upon completion of the reaction. The next reaction set lowers the total final concentration of potassium iodate. By combining 40 milliliters of the potassium iodate solution with 10 milliliters of water. After which the same amount of 5 milliliters sodium bisulfite solution is added. This decrease in concentration of a reactant will cause an increase in the reaction time. Overall, the blue pre color represents the product of iodine. A second trial using the same volumes and concentrations is then performed in, able, in order to obtain an average reaction time for these concentrations. 40 milliliters of potassium iodate solution is combined with 10 milliliters of water, thereby lowering the concentration. After which, 5 milliliters of potassium bisulfite solution is added. The blue color appears, making sure that the iodine is present and the reaction is complete. The third setup is performed by lowering the concentration of potassium iodate even further. 30 milliliters of the potassium iodate solution is combined with 20 milliliters of water lowering the concentration. The same volume as normal, 5 milliliters of the sodium bisulfite solution is added. It is important to note that the potassium iodate solution is combined with water first and the two reactants meet each other in the last combination.
as the concentrations have been decreased, the time it takes for the reaction to occur is increasing. The presence of the blue iodine solution indicates the reaction is complete. The second trial is then performed using 30 milliliters of the potassium iodate solution, 20 milliliters of water, and 5 milliliters of the sodium bisulfite solution. In each trial, the final volume is 55 milliliters, ensuring that nothing is changing except for the concentration of the potassium iodate solution. By lowering the concentration, the reaction time is increasing, and you can notice this already in the subsequ subsequent different mixtures. The blue color in the second trial is an indication that the reaction is complete. The fourth reaction combination is a combination of 20 milliliters of potassium iodate solution, 30 milliliters of water, and 5 milliliters of sodium bisulfite solution. This lower combination of reactant lowers the rate and increases the time for the reaction to occur. The appearance of the blue color indicates the formation of iodine and the completion of the reaction. The second trial, again, uses 20 milliliters of potassium iodate solution, 30 milliliters of water, and 5 milliliters of sodium bisulfite solution. You'll notice by this stage that as the concentration is being decreased in a linear fashion, the time is increasing in a nonlinear rate. This is due to the logarithmic relationship of between reaction time and concentration. The blue color means that the reaction is complete. The last reaction combination uses the most dilute concentration of potassium iodate. 10 milliliters of the potassium iodate solution is combined with 40 milliliters of water. And again, 5 milliliters of the sodium bisulfite solution. The 
being the lowest concentration, this reaction combination will take the longest amount of time. By looking at the relationship between concentration of reactant and the reaction time, you can plot this in a logarithmic scale. The slope of the line which you plot in the, in the report will be the rate, will be the reaction order of this reaction. It's already seen that concentration plays a critical role in the reaction time of different reactions, where lowering the concentration even a small amount can have a large effect on the general outcome of the reaction time. You'll also notice that the blue color is slightly less intense than that of the first reaction mixture. This is again due to the lowering of the concentration of the overall reactant and therefore the lower concentration of the final product. The second trial of the reaction again uses 10 milliliters of potassium iodate solution 40 milliliters of water and 5 milliliters of sodium bisulfite solution. The final volume of 55 milliliters has been held constant throughout the reaction. The only difference has been the changing concentration of this starting potassium iodate solution. This change in concentration is changing the reaction time. If you were to plot the negative log of the reaction time on the y-axis versus the log of the concentration of potassium iodate, the slope of that straight line will equal the reaction order for potassium iodate. This reaction can also be performed by varying the concentration of the sodium bisulfite ion, thereby determining the reaction order of sodium bisulfite. In the rate law, the reaction order can be different for the two or more starting reactants. The appearance of the blue color indicates the formation of iodine and the completion of the reaction. By performing this reaction in this way and determining the reaction order through a graphical method, you can determine reaction orders based on any variability of concentration without needing to rely on exact whole factor numbers.